Welcome. We are learning about the factors affecting expression of the clone genes in the E. coli. And now we are going to learn about the plasmid copy number and the plasmid stability, how it is going to affect the expression of the clone genes in the E. coli. The factors that we have learned, it is a promoter strength, transcriptional termination and the translational initiation sequences. Okay, so going towards the today's topic, plasmid copy number and plasmid stability. Plasmid copy number. What do you mean by the plasmid copy number? The number of plasmid molecules present into a given bacterial cell, it is going to be said as a plasmid copy number or the number of origin of replications of the plasmids present into a bacterial cell that it is called as the plasmid copy number. Now, according to the plasmid copy number, the plasmids, they are classified as low copy number plasmid, high copy number plasmid and the medium copy number plasmids. A bacterial cell, when it is consisting of about the five copies of the plasmid, then it is called as a low copy number plasmid. When it is of about 20, 30, then it is called as the medium copy number plasmid. And when it is about the hundreds of the plasmid present into a bacterial cell, then it is called as the high copy number of the plasmids. Now, what the plasmid copy number determines? The plasmid copy number determines the gene doses accessible for the expression. And accordingly, then what would be the choice to clone a gene of interest? A low copy number plasmid or a high copy number plasmid or a medium copy number plasmid. So here, the choice is low or the medium copy number plasmid because we have to go for the expression of the gene. Okay, so here the expression vectors which are made, they are of the low copy number or the medium copy number plasmids. Okay, so uh, when, okay, when we have to multiply the foreign gene or a gene of interest, at that time we have to choose a cloning vector which has a high copy number of the plasmids. Okay, so when we have to multiply a gene, then we have to choose a plasmid vector which has a high copy number. But when we have to express that gene at that time, we have to choose a plasmid vector. We have to choose an expression vector which is a plasmid and that plasmid, it should be a low or a medium copy number plasmid. Okay, so there is a subcloning from the cloning vector to the expression vector. Okay, now here, why we have to choose the low or the medium copy number plasmid vectors for the expression of the genes. Now, uh, what, will, uh, what would be expected about the gene doses when it is a low copy number plasmid and when it is a high copy number plasmid. So uh, here, consider here the low copy number plasmid. Now here it is a blue colored, it is a, is a, it is a bacterial cell and here this dot, they are the plasmids. Okay, so here, uh, in the bacterial cell, there are about the five plasmids means what the foreign gene, it is also uh, present into the bacterial cell and it is of the five number that is there are the lower number of the foreign genes which are present into the bacterial cell. Okay. Now, uh, if it is a high copy number or it is a low copy number, the when there is expression of the gene, at that time the expression, it is a regulated one. That is the regulated promoters, they are used for the expression of the genes. And uh, if you want to learn more about the regulated promoters, I have previously made the uh, video on the regulated promoters that you can watch. Okay, so when there is a use of this regulated promoters, at that time we can switch on and switch off of the expression of the genes. Now, when there is a no need at that time, there is a switch off, that is, there is a repression. And though there is a repression, okay, though there is a repression, the gene, it is going to get expressed at a lower level that it is called as the leaky transcription. So, that leaky transcription, when it is going to be happen, when the foreign gene, it is on a lower copy number plasmids, at that time, there will be the low level of the proteins which are present into the bacterial cell. Okay, 
but when it is a high copy number of the plasmid then at that time what will happen number of foreign genes which are present into the bacterial cell they are also at a higher level so the leaky transcription which is going to take place into the bacterial cell that it is also at a higher level because the plasmid number it is a higher one so the amount of protein which is present into the bacterial cell the foreign protein which is present into the bacterial cell it is at a higher level and as it is foreign to the bacterial cell it is not required by the bacterial cell okay so when it is a high copy number of the plasmids at that time the gene doses it is a higher one and when it is a low copy number plasmids at that time the gene doses it is a lower one okay so when we are considering the high copy number of the plasmid one more factor it has to be considered that when there is okay when there is a high copy number of the plasmid vectors they are used okay at that time there may be a metabolic drain now uh, here when there is a expression of the genes okay when there is expression of the gene at that time when it is a high copy number of the plasmids used plasmid vectors they are used the number of foreign genes which are present they are also at a higher levels so here the expression machinery which is present to the bacterial cell it is going to be used for the synthesis of the foreign protein only okay so what will happen due to that the another metabolic uh, proteins which are um, required by the cell they are not going to be synthesized so the growth of the bacterial cell it is going to be lower down and uh, another thing it is what when there has to be the cell division at that time the plasmids they are also going to replicate okay so these high copy number plasmids they are also going to replicate so the replication machinery it is also going to be used by the plasmids and both of these it is going to make a stress over the bacterial cell and that it is called as the metabolic stress and here there is a metabolic drain and due to that the bacterial cell it is not allowing the high copy number plasmid to get retained into the bacterial cell okay because it is lowering the growth rate okay and it is not allowing the proper growth of the cell so a bacterial cell it is going to think that why should i keep this expression vector in me okay if it is not benefiting me okay so uh, so it is going to affect what it is going to affect the plasmid stability there will be okay there will be loss of the plasmids so that the bacterial cell it is becoming a plasmid free and also there may be the structural instability that is there may be the mutations into the plasmid so that that plasmids now they are unable to make the uh, or they are unable to synthesize the proteins that is there is a mutations into the foreign genes so to avoid this okay to avoid this the foreign gene when it has to be expressed okay it has to be cloned into the low copy number plasmids or the medium copy number plasmids so that there will not be the metabolic drain and expression vector and the bacterial cells they will live together happily okay so the low copy number plasmids provide a lower gene dosage which minimizes background levels and maintains the tight regulation of the expression okay now going towards the next one plasmid stability what is a plasmid stability plasmid persistence in the population depends on the stable plasmid inheritance that is the plasmid stability okay so here the plasmid stability it is uh, segregative stability structural stability just now we have seen about the structural instability okay now what is the structural stability structural stability refers to the capability of a cell to resist genetic mutations that bring about loss of gene function in a production pathway now when it is a high copy number plasmids there uh, due to the metabolic drain there will be the mutations there will be the genetic mutations into the plasmids and this it is going to give the structural instability so to have the structural stability there should be the 
cloning of the foreign gene into the plasmid vector which has a low copy number or the medium copy number okay and a gene it should be a regulated one it should be under the regulated promoter so that there will be the maintenance of the structural stability now next one it is a segregative stability that is after each cell division okay after each cell division each and every daughter cell it is getting a plasmid it has to be confirmed okay it is a that is the segregational stability refers to the capability of a cell to correctly distribute plasmids into the daughter cells to maintain the copy number okay that is each and every daughter cell it should get a single copy of the plasmids then that plasmid copy number it is going to be maintained into that, into that particular bacterial cell now the how to achieve the segregative plasmid stability now when it is a high copy number plasmid there is a no problem for the distribution of the plasmids because the plasmid copy number it is a higher one and when there is a cell division it is look at that each and every cell it is going to get a plasmid but when it is a low copy number plasmid or a medium copy number plasmid there has to be the partitioning function or there should be the presence of the par region or there has to be a par mechanism okay so the plasmid vector it should consisting of the par region so that there ha there will be the proper uh, distribution of the plasmid to each and every daughter cell because the number of plasmids they are the lower one and to confirm that each and every daughter cell it is getting a uh, plasmid okay it is uh, getting a plasmid that it has to, to be confirmed when there is the par mechanism partitioning mechanism it is present so in expression vector when it is a low copy number or it is a uh, it is a medium copy number in that vector there should be the inclusion of what should be the inclusion of this par region now um, as we have seen here okay okay here these are the plasmids the plasmids they are present into the bacterial cell and all the plasmids they are the same one they are the homologous to each other so what may happen there may be the homologous recombinations or there may be during the replication there may be the formation of the multimeric forms of the plasmids okay so here these plasmids they are connected to each other and it is going to form the multimeric forms okay so how to resolve these multimeric forms now how first uh, how this multimeric forms it is going to affect the segregative stability okay so uh, when in a bacterial cell okay when the plasmid sit in, in a bacterial cell a bacterial cell it is going to recognize the plasmid copy number according to the number of origins which are present into the bacterial cell okay as the number of origins they are achieved up way if there is a five plasmid copy number that is a five molecules that is a five origin of replications when it has going to be achieved five origin of replications they are now present at that time the bacterial cell it is now going to stop the replication of the plasmids but if okay though and though it is connected to each other then and then a bacterial cell it is going to consider that the copy number it has been achieved okay so here when there is a cell division at that time it is not confirmed that the each and every daughter cell it is getting a plasmid that is there will be the segregative instability due to the multimeric form and how to resolve this problem of the multimeric forms of the plasmid it has been resolved by observing that in e uh, in, into the call even plasmid there is a recombinogenic site it is a cer site it is present okay this cer site okay it is involved into the recombination and for the recombination who is helping the host cell protein xer it is helping for the recombination so the multimeric forms of the plasmid now due to the recombination now it is going to convert into the monomers so here okay so here when when such a problem of the multimeric forms of the plasmid it is going to be there at that time there should be the inclusion of the cer site and the host should be selected which is going to consisting of the xer protein 
Okay, in this way, the problem of the multimeric forms it is going to be resolved. Next one, it is a plasmid incompatibility. Now, plasmid will be incompatible if they have the same mechanism of the replication control. And they will be incompatible if they share the same partitioning region, that is the same par region. So, here, when there is an expression of the gene into the expression by a expression vector, at that time, for the regulation, okay, for the regulation, there may be need of the one more plasmid, one more expression vector, one more uh, expression vector, which is a plasmid. Uh, that we have seen when we have learned about a T7 promoter. There is a PET vector, okay, and with that, there is another vector, it is also present, and that it is a PLYSS vector. Okay, that is there are the presence of the two plasmid vectors in the same bacterial cell. So these two plasmid vectors, it has to, it has to be maintained into the bacterial cell. So these two vectors, they should not be from the same incompatibility group. That is these two vectors, these two plasmid vectors, they should not have the same mechanism of the replication control. And they should not share the same power region. Otherwise, what will happen? One of the plasmid it is going to be lost and it is going to affect the expression of the gene. Okay, I think you may have cleared the idea about how the plasmid copy number and the plasmid stability it is going to affect the expression of the foreign gene into the E. coli. If you like my video, please subscribe my channel and also share my video with your friends so the knowledge it is going to spread. Thank you.